Okay, so hello and welcome everyone. I'm gonna call this video what uh, Google knows about, in this case, adverse selection. So I don't know if I'm gonna publish this. If I do, I hope you like it. Um, if not, we'll see what they, see what they say. So um, I typed in adverse selection and it says adverse selection occurs when one party in a negotiation has relevant information the other party lacks. Uh, so adverse selection can happen when this when this is true, we'd actually make this kind of the definition of asymmetric information. So asymmetric information is when uh, you know one player has more information than the other. One part of the transaction has more information than the other. You can get several problems following from a scenario where there's adver where there's uh, asymmetric information. Adverse selection is one of them. You could also get moral hazard. We could further define adverse selection of buyers and adverse selection of sellers, but Okay, so this is, yeah, Investopedia. Um, yeah, not a super authority, but uh, to start, let's see, what does Wikipedia say? In economics, insurance, and risk management, adverse selection is a market situation where buyers and sellers have different information. Yeah, again, good, good start. Not really the best definition. Um, I mean, adverse selection, in, so the better definition of adverse selection is it's a problem of asymmetric information. Asymmetric information is a situation where buyers and sellers have different information. However, adverse selection is distinct from moral hazard, which can also happen. And the definition of moral hazard might just as well be the, exactly that same, that same definition. So adverse selection happens when uh, you get basically bad selection, right? So you have maybe... Uh, information that is hidden from buyer or the seller in the case of like the used car market might be a good example. So you have a seller of a car knows the quality of the car way better than the buyer could, could ever know. Um, this, the seller knows if they have a good car, they have a bad car. Uh, the buyer doesn't, the buyer's got a guess and they're formed their guess based on their beliefs about the average quality of a randomly selected car. If they think there's a lot of bad cars, they're going to want to pay a lower price. If they think there's very few bad cars, they might be willing to pay a high price. Problem of adverse selection is it can lead to market failure in the sense of if buyers believe on average that the cars in the market are bad, then you have a situation where they're willing to pay a low price, but the sellers who actually know they have a good car might see that price is too low and not want to sell their good car. And over time, buyers figure this out and realize, oh, all the cars are bad. So then the price they want to pay is lower. And then even more sellers of okay cars leave the market. And before you know it, it's just bad cars that are available. So that's the adverse selection problem. Moral hazard, I just mentioned that since I said it. Moral hazard happens if there's um, conflict of incentives, if there's hidden actions, if there's opportunism on behalf of one part of the transaction. Lots of times we place this in the context of a principal agent model where you might have like, you know, um, principal might be... Uh, company might be like executives or whatever and the agents might be like individual workers and individual workers might have an incentive for a fixed salary to work as little as possible because they get paid the same whereas the corporation shareholders executives want the workers to work as hard as possible because that enhances the value of the of the company so that'd be a, a problem of moral hazard. Another example of moral hazard would be banks trying to avoid this when they give loans, for instance, to an entrepreneur. You know, they give you an entre entrepreneur gets a loan that they're going to fund uh, some you know, capital purchase to be able to manufacture, or be able to set up their their store, or whatever. Uh, the moral hazard problem would be if the if the entrepreneur takes that money and then gambles it, right, or invests it in a risky asset or something like that. Um, there's also adverse selection of uh, buyers, and that happens in the insurance market, and that's a situation where the buyers of insurance know more about their inherent riskiness than does the seller. Okay, so what is adverse selection with example? So adverse selection in the insurance industry involves an applicant gaining insurance at a cost below their true level of risk, someone with nicotine dependency, getting insurance at the same rate as somebody without nicotine dependency is an example of insurance. Nicotine, okay, look, so if you have a, usually it'd be tobacco, it's, I don't, I don't know. So nicotine at the molecule level, I mean, I probably, it's strongly correlated with the tobacco, to, I don't, whatever. So I, I realize nicotine is the addictive chemical that's in tobacco. I realize this, yes, but it's just odd that they 
just odd that they'd say nicotine dependency because usually we think of like smoker versus non, I don't know, whatever. So um, yeah, right. There are different rates. And so one, one worry would be, you know, if you're applying for life insurance or something, they ask, if, are you a smoker or non-smoker? And so um, adverse selection would be, you know, if people have better information about their inherent riskiness, maybe they're not currently a smoker, but they had a long history of smoking in their life and they don't disclose this to the um, insurance agent. Although that might be, I don't know if that's a fraud or if there's, anyway, so that would, it would certainly co constitute adverse selection of buyers. Yeah, I mean, so, um, adverse selection involves an applicant gaining insurance at a cost below their true level of risk. Mm, I don't know if I'd call that the adverse selection. I mean, the adverse selection, adverse selection is the better way to think about this is it's like overrepresentation of risky buyers, basically. So you'd have like more people who are expecting to have big expenditures uh, that they need covered applying for insurance in the first place. And then you'd have your less risky individuals just not wanting to buy insurance in the first place. What happens in adverse selection? Anti-selection, term used in economics and insurance, which are buyers in it. Oh, this is horrible. Yeah, I mean, the better answer is what I said. What's adverse selection versus moral hazard? I mean, adverse selection happens prior to the transaction. Moral hazard happens after the transaction. So... Uh, let's see. Adverse selection is a phenomenon that bad risks are more likely than good risks to buy insurance. Good. Adverse selection seems very important for life insurance and health insurance. Moral hazard having insurance may change one's behavior. If one's insured, one might become reckless. Yeah. So this is, I mean, this is probably an economist or someone in finance that wrote this. So yeah, w this is a much better source. <laughs> Obviously, they know what they're talking about. Um, and I, yeah, that's a, it's a pretty good, pretty good explanation there. So Google should pull more from them and less from Investopedia and whatever. Um, anyway, so <laughs> what's adverse selection? Why is adverse selection a problem? What is adverse selection known as? <laughs> what's an example of adverse selection Quizlet? Oh boy. Uh, adverse selection is anti-selection. Does adverse selection reduce risk? No, adverse selection increases risk. Uh, at, Reducing adverse selection can mean reducing the risk of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reducing adverse selection means reducing the risk of losing money. But how did they, how did they pull this adverse selection reduce risk from from this? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. So adverse selection, if in the presence of adverse selection, the whole problem is that you've got you know you've got bad risks. Uh, how do you overcome adverse selection? Uh, you overcome adverse selection by signaling and screening. So you'd want. Um, so if if you're worried that you're gonna if if you're the side that's got the better information, you try to signal uh, your true underlying like riskiness or quality in the case of like uh, case of like the insurance example. And if you're on the buyer side, you'd or the other side, like you're you're on the, if you're on the less informed side, you'd want to use a screen, right? And so um, you I don't know like you you look for. Um, you look for something that's strongly correlated with, with, with whatever would be the lower risk type. So, um, I don't know. So how do you overcome adverse selection? Grouping high risk individuals, trying them, char charging them higher premiums. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one way to reduce adverse selection is presumably if we have a large group, right? Um, well, this is a little bit different. So this is saying grouping high-risk individuals, charging them higher premiums. Yeah, I mean, if some way to be able to get the high-risk individuals together, and then offer that group a higher premium, and then if it, if if on average the price is going to seem like it'll work out for them, they'll they'll buy. Um, yeah, I don't know. So this is just bizarre. <laughs> Hope you enjoy this video.